each VM will have global namespaces which represent the resources at VM level. When you start a new process with one or more namespaces, it in a way becomes a container. In this diagram, container one and two are started with names separate IPC, PID, and UTC namespaces. Container can share a namespace with other containers or even with the host. In this example, container two and three share the same network namespace, so they get the same IP address. In Kubernetes, this construct is used by parts. Containers in the same part share a network namespace. PCF guarantees complete isolation for each application instance by leveraging all namespaces for each container. This takes away plenty of risks that are inherent in a DIY platform. And PCF definitely goes beyond just the namespaces. And we'll see how it is done in the, this two-part session. Let us take a look at process isolation. PID namespace limits cross-container process visibility. It also limits the ability of processes within different PID namespaces to interact with each other, for example, using signals. First, process in the PID namespace gets PID1. PID namespace also provides PID virtualization. For example, each container will have its own PID1 process and the subsequent processes uh, PIDs will increase sequentially. User namespace is perhaps the most critical namespace from security point of view. It is relatively a new addition to namespaces. When there was no user namespace, or if you do not use user namespace, the UIDs in the containers cannot be isolated. These are privileged containers, where a root in a container maps to a root on the VM. Privileged containers are inherently unsafe. In, this, in case of a container breakout, the malicious code pretty much can do whatever it wants as a root on the host or VM. A user namespace helps isolate UIDs. Container will have its UID zero, that is a root user within a container, but it is mapped to an arbitrary low privilege UID on the VM. That is, it is a non-root user on the VM. These are called unprivileged containers. By default, each application instance created by PCF runs as an unprivileged container. This is crucial because privilege escalation exploit can grant a malicious code the ability to run code as a root. Even if this happens, it will not actually result in the capabilities of VM's root being granted to that user. For example, such a malicious code in that case will not be able to mount host root file system. PCF will soon stop supporting privileged containers. In fact, PCF is in process of taking this beyond just unprivileged containers. PCF will soon have completely rootless containers. That means even the container runtime will run without root privileges. Next is file system isolation. Goal here is to prevent one container gaining, gaining illegitimate access to file system objects of other containers or that of the host. Mount namespace isolates the mount points visible to each application instance. So a process can issue mount and unmount commands only on those mount points. However, mount namespace doesn't guarantee data isolation. Containers inherit view of the file system mounts from their parent, so can access all parts of the file system. So some solutions use ch root system call, changes the root directory of the container. However, privileged processes can escape ch root, sometimes referred to as ch root jail. So the PCF uses pivot root system call, which actually changes the root file system of each application instance. 
the issue with the reward root system call is that it actually changes the root mount point. If it is used without mount namespace, that would mean causing change to the root mount point of the host. That is why mount namespace is used to separate the mount points of the container from that of the host, and the pivot root is used along with it to provide solid file system isolation. This is further augmented by restricting the user scope by using user namespace. This means that each container can have its own uh, root file system. This gives powerful choice for PCF to pick the most suitable file system for host and the containers. PCF uses hardened Ubuntu stem cell for VM and hardened CF Linux FS2 or CF Linux FS3 now for root FS of the containers. More on hardening part in part two. For application instances, the PCF uses combination of overlay FS and XFS file system drivers. Overlay FS provides layering. Root FS is the only uh, is the read only layer in this layering. Application binaries are in the read write layer, which is a very small part of the file system. And the application binaries sit on top of the read read only layer of the root file system. Pivot will continuously test various file system drivers such as ButterFS and AUFS for scale and speed and security. Some of these Pivotal customers run more than 28,000 application instances. Pivotal Web Services, which is a SaaS offering of PCF, run tens of thousands of application instances. The file system that is picked up for PCF has to perform at that scale without compromising speed and security. Last but not the least, isolated networking. Each application instance is started in a separate network namespace. It gives each container its own IP address and the port virtualization. Each application instance on the same VM can listen on port 8080 as they are all in a separate network namespace. However, this IP is not directly routable from outside and that makes it tricky because your application needs to communicate over a network. This is achieved using a pair of WETH or virtual ethernet interfaces. Uh, one of the WETH interfaces is assigned to the network namespace of the container and the other on the VM. Virtual link is established in this pair. For each application instance, there is a port on VM and the routing is controlled by a routing table on the VM. For example, uh, Take a look at this example depicted here. Traffic on port 6001 port will be routed to container one and traffic on 6002 port is routed to container two. By default, there is a firewall that prevents containers on the same VM communicating with each other. This is essential because you can actually have containers of different tenants sitting on the same VM. We will take a look at this part in detail in part two. Now let's take a look at resource limiting. C groups or control group provide a mechanism for controlling access to resources. C groups provide resource limiting, prioritization and accounting. It is crucial in multi-tenant environment that one application instance doesn't hog all the system resources. C groups provide the first line of defense against denial of service attack. Memory control group is used to allocate memory quota for the container. If the application instance needs its quota or if the application instance exceeds its quota, it is killed and a new application instance is created by PCF. CPU allocation is a bit tricky as there are layers of virtualization. So instead of allocating CPU in terms of percentage, the CPU control group allocates CPU in terms of shares. The actual CPU allocation is done on the basis of ratio of the total shares on that VM versus the share of the container. 
Let us explain this with example. In this case, right now, there is only one container on the VM. So it gets 100% of the available CPU cycles. At this point, it doesn't really matter how many shares this container has. Now, a second container comes up with exactly the same amount of shares. Since they both have the same amount of shares, both containers get 50% of the available CPU. Now a third container has come up with twice the amount of share. Now based on the ratio technique we discussed earlier, third container gets 50% of the CPU and remaining 50% is divided equally uh, between the first two containers. Hope this makes the concept of CPU shares clear. But does it mean that anyone can start a container with possibly highest number of shares? Answer is no. PCF grants CPU shares to application instances based on the memory allocation. CPU shares are allocated, mem uh, the CPU shares are allocated in linear fashion to the memory allocation and the shares are capped at 1024. The formula used to compute the CPU shares is given here. As you can see in this graph, the CPU shares grow linearly based on the memory, but are capped at 1024. 